Hi, I'm Dr. Yosef with During, and the topic of today's video is to talk about which antidepressants seem to cause the worst withdrawal symptoms. And um, this was kind of inspired by a review article by uh, Dr. Mark Horowitz, um, who is a um, uh, psychiatrist over at the University College London, and um, uh, he's, he's done a lot of research on this stuff. He's um, out there in social media. I think he's, he's had his own antidepressant withdrawal problems, and um, really he wrote, he wrote a great article. So um, I'm going to kind of mix it in with some of my uh, clinical experience and what I've seen. So kind of for me, the real heart of this article is his list where he kind of breaks down the most severe, the, the antidepressants that cause the most severe withdrawal. And he looks at a number of different sources, but it's, it's pretty good stuff. So, I mean, my understanding, at least for some of the sources that he used, were things such as um, um, frequency of uh, calls to withdrawal hotlines in the UK. So how common were people calling and asking about help with antidepressant withdrawal and what were the drugs that they were telling the call center representative? So, you know, they've taken that data and then they've um, um, adjusted it against the um, frequency with which those drugs are prescribed. You know, and essentially what that means is it's not going to be um, um, misled. Say, for instance, you have a lot of complaints about Cymbalta and, you know, maybe Cymbalta is actually not worse. It's just prescribed more. So they've adjusted it against the background rate of prescriptions to kind of get rid of that bias. So uh, that being said, um, you know, the list is very long in here. I'll leave a link to the article if you want to look at it. But I'm going to mention the common one, the common antidepressants, which most people would likely be taking. And so uh, the worst ones, paroxetine, um, which is Paxil or venlafaxine, Effexor, uh, desvenlafaxine, um, which I believe is Pristique, and then uh, fluvoxamine, which is Luvox, metazapine, which is Remeron, and um, I think I mentioned duloxetine, but if I didn't, that is Cymbalta. So those ones are the worst. And my reaction to that is, yeah, that's probably true. You know, Paxil has... Um, uh, well, actually, I'll say a lot of these ones are really well known for having the most severe antidepressant withdrawal. And probably the reason behind that is they all have short half-lives. So um, if you were to cold turkey stop these medications, you would feel miserable quickly within a day or two. And so it makes sense that, say, someone stops this medication acutely, they kind of white knuckle it for two days, and on day three, they just go, no, nope, I'm going to pick up the phone, and I'm going to call this center because I'm having problems. So uh, yeah, that really meshes with my clinical experience that those are really severe acute withdrawal symptoms. Uh, the next list, which was the more moderately, um, the more moderate, um, moderately severe ones, is uh, citalopram, Selexa, escitalopram, Lexapro, sertraline, Zoloft, and what we have, we have Vortioxetine, and you have to forgive me, I don't remember the brand name for that over here. Um, and so, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, those ones have a slightly longer half-life, perhaps. That's that's what behind that's what's behind it. But yeah, they're definitely less common than the previous. You know, people complaining about severe reactions with these medications is less common than the previously mentioned ones. And then. The uh, least severe is um, what we have there is uh, fluoxetine, which is Prozac. And that makes a lot of sense because Prozac has this really long half-life. And so even if you cold turkeyed it, it kind of self-tapers to a degree. And so if you are, I mean, you may be able to, you know, some people may be able to stop this without having any problems. So um, I want to caveat, uh, well, I want to add this comment onto that. This research is um, really looking at the acute withdrawal phase. And so it doesn't really apply to people who have the uh, post-acute withdrawal syndrome. Um, for that one, I'm not sure which ones are worse, but I definitely know that people who have been on, you know, sertraline and fluoxetine have had severe post-acute withdrawal syndrome. So this should be 
um, this research should be understood to apply to those people who are lucky enough to not develop that and just go through this kind of acute withdrawal um, and then kind of are normal. Maybe it will link into who has the more severe problems long term, but I don't think there's enough research for that. Um, an interesting question about this is, you know, is this because there's something unique about the pharmacology of those drugs that have more severe reactions, or is it just uh, a, a factor of um, the pharmacokinetics? By that I mean how quickly those drugs leave your system, uh, which you know leaves you in that state of feeling really hit by that withdrawal reaction. So I hope that was interesting. That is a overview of the antidepressants that uh, cause the most severe acute withdrawal. So uh, thank you.